elements that you may partake in communion with us. Those who are worshiping in the sanctuary, we invite you to complete the Ministry of Friendship folder during the offertory and to join us in the West Narthex following worship for refreshments and fellowship. Children in free kindergarten to grade two are invited to Sunday school following the children's sermon. Third, fourth, and fifth graders are invited to stay in worship for communion. Junior and senior high will not meet today as we hope they are walking in the crop walk. The Adult Education Forum gathers at 11.15 in Parish Hall for the final class of the Bread of Life series. Members and friends will gather at one o'clock today at Third Presbyterian Church for the 2022 Church World Service Crop Hunger Walk. If you are not walking, we invite you to stop by a table in the West Narthex following worship to make a donation in support of those who are walking. We are grateful to Krista Steller and Becky Martin who coordinate this annual community event. This week's activities at Westminster include Elizabeth Circle, Ruth and Naomi Circle, and the Presbyterian Women Lunch. Children's Choir and Westminster Choristers begin their rehearsals this week for the 2022-2023 ministry year under the direction of our new director for Muse Children's Music, Katie Moore. Next Sunday, October 9, we will hold a congregational meeting following worship for the purpose of electing church officers. When the work of the church is complete, we will gather in Parish Hall for the On My Own Time exhibit of collections and hobbies hosted by the Worship, Music, and Arts Committee. At this time, we welcome Jay Kennerly, who is a member of the Stewardship Campaign for a ministry moment. Uh, with apologies to my session colleagues who have heard uh, this first story. Um, several years ago, uh, while visiting a client in her home, I saw her wedding photo uh, taken in Chicago, a uh, Chicago area church. I asked what church it was, knowing that she, an immigrant from a southeastern European country of predominantly Roman Catholic residents, and her husband, an immigrant as well, a Muslim from the Middle East, had apparently found a compromise location for their nuptials. She thought a moment, and her response was, I, I think it was a Presbyterian church. Uh, they allow you to believe anything, don't they? Mm. My answer was less important than what her question precipitated in my thinking about why we are here at Westminster. Mm, gratitude, gratitude. Maybe if it were to be expressed by a single word, that would be it. Carol and I are so very grateful for the community of believers, disbelievers, unbelievers at Westminster. Let's face it, nobody bats a thousand. While it's not quite as undefined a theological spiritual consortium as my friend described, the doors are open and the paths are many. The messages are thought provoking, the music is inspiring, the education unmatched. Some of the many reasons we found ourselves choosing Westminster. Or did Westminster choose us? Predestination? <clears throat> no matter. While church shopping and deciding where we might find spiritual guidance in Springfield, and after my finding the choir a place I really, really needed to be, we began attending WPC on a regular basis. But 
uh, and it was not without some difficulty I came to s sign on the dotted line. But while sitting in the choir gallery one Sunday morning, I heard Dr. Barge talk about struggling with the faith. Now, when he confessed that he was still struggling with some issues, I asked myself, who are you to think your struggle is any greater than his? He further went on to say, if you are struggling, can you think of a better place to bring your struggles? And while I'm not a big fan of epiphanies or in altar calls, if he'd have done one then, I'm not sure I would have been able to stay in my seat. Suffice it to say that the warmth and friendliness of the members who here, who are really good at warmth and friendliness, and the cautious but welcoming glances and half smiles of those who aren't, both somehow reassured us we were in the right place and helped us make our decision to make this church our home. And you all, including those saints long gone from our midst, embraced our children, Pamela and Christian, when they were born into this wonderful church family. So I thank you, Westminster, for what you have done for and with us. There is no amount of time, talent, or treasure we can bring to you that will ever suffice for what we have received from this generous, loving community. May I ask you to think hard about why you are here and where your time, talents, and treasures will be most graciously and thankfully welcomed. During the voluntary, a trinity of girls from Bridges will process with the symbols of communion and today's Swedish communion bread prepared by Brad Swanson. They will also lead us in the call to worship. Our communion table is adorned with African textiles, a gift of the late Andrea Butler. And now, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Thank you.
as we join brothers and sisters around the world to acknowledge our need for forgiveness in preparation for partaking in world communion. First with one voice and then silently, let us pray. Gracious God, you created the earth and called it good, yet we see brokenness. You call us to be peace bearers, but we choose division over diversity and confrontation over civility. You ask us to emulate your love to the least of these among us, yet we often choose our own comfort over certain needs of others around us. Merciful God, forgive us and rekindle the passion in us to be part of bringing forth your peaceable kingdom. Hear now our silent prayer of confession. The psalmist proclaims, the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and God's compassion is over all that God has made. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our transgressions from us. Friends, Believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another with a sign of peace.
and girls, welcome to the chancel for the children's sermon. And thank you for your Sunday school offering. And I understand from Mrs. Sherrick that you have selected the gift of chicks to the families we support in the Heifer. In the Heifer International. Yes, boys and girls, today is World Communion Sunday. And I have brought something in honor of World Communion Sunday. Can you tell me what this is? Yes, Sadie? This is a globe. And you can see all of the different countries around our world in the place we call home, the earth. And today, all of the people that live in all these countries are sharing in communion and partaking in bread together. That gives us, that kind of puts it into perspective for it, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Thank you. Did you know, boys and girls, that bread has been a part of our life and the life of all people around the world for over 6,000 years? It's a staple of our nourishment. And although it looks different in some countries, it has the same parts to it that make up bread. And you know, Jesus said... Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And when Jesus said that, Jesus was saying, the most basic, important thing in life that nourishes our bodies, that is what I am to you. That my spirit, my presence will nourish your inner spirit in the same way that bread nourishes the body. So bread has basically three ingredients. And I have brought each of those three for us to remember and learn together. What is the first ingredient of bread? Water. Water, yes. Pure water is really helpful. What is the second ingredient of bread? Salt. 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 No sugar? No sugar. What is the third ingredient of bread? Yeah, which is flour when you crumble it all up, right? So these three ingredients work together. These three parts work together to make the bread that we eat at communion. And I have a little cube of bread for each of us, and I'm gonna walk around and have you each take one. And as you eat it, I am going to share with you that as the bread has three parts, in the same way we understand that God has three parts. Okay, so just take one piece of bread that has been baked. So in the same way that bread has water, salt, and flour, we understand God as the God, the first part, God who created the world we live in. God is the creator of the world. And the second part of who God is, is God is Jesus, who joined us in this world to show us the way of love. And then the third part of who God is, did you get one? The third part of who God is, is the Holy Spirit which we believe lives in our hearts and strengthens us and gives us the courage to do the right thing in life and to love one another. 
So boys and girls, this is a holy day in our life together as Christians, as we join brothers and sisters around the world. Will you pray with me? Let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Holy triune God, bread of life, thank you for all the ways you nourish us and strengthen and sustain us to be your children. Amen. And let us rise and we're going to sing God Welcomes All. Our first scripture reading is from Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 19 through 26. Prophet Jeremiah, the author of Lamentations, is brutally honest about the pain in verse 17 and 18 when he states that he has forgotten what happiness is and all that he had hoped for from the Lord. Yet through being honest and lamenting out loud to God in truth leads to a transformation through faith, a trust in God's faithfulness. Hear the words of the Lord through Jeremiah. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says the Lord, my soul. Therefore, I will hope in God. The Lord is good to those who wait for God, to the soul who seeks God. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Our second scripture reading comes from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. 2 Timothy is known to be Paul's final letter that he wrote in prison while he was in Rome. Facing an unescapable execution, as he reminds of all of us in chapter 4, that the time of my departure has come. Yet, like Jeremiah Paul does not focus on what is in front of, him, up front of him, but boldly proclaim the power and love of God. Hear now the word of the Lord. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus, our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did. When I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. 
recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived in first in your grandmother Louise and your mother Eunice, and now, I'm sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or me, his prisoner, but, but join with me in suffering for gospel in the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to God's own purpose and grace. And this grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this, for this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know that one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard the deposit I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, would you pray with me? Holy and loving God, we thank you for your steadfast love that never ceases and mercies that never comes to an end. For we testify that they are new every morning. As we lean on your faithfulness, strengthen us through your word that we may be the vessel to do your will. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God does something for us and in us and through us as we gather together. I believe this simple statement to my core. This is my conviction. This is why I turned down so many other vocational opportunities answered God's call, and share the gospel. This is also why we worship, share our talents, gifts, and our labors. It certainly doesn't hurt that we love one another and that Westminster is truly a special and spiritual family for most of us, if not all of us. And yet, there are a few Sundays each year that really brings passion of my heart, and that includes World Communion Sunday. It is because how it connects not only us in this worship to one another, but to all our Christian siblings to share in God's meal and the table set for us to be shared. 
God does something for us and in us and through us as we gather together. My very first time that I experienced such as this was when I was in college at University of Illinois. When the college campus gathered together in a Follinger auditorium to worship together. It felt like a regular worship until we started to sing Chris Tomlin's song, How Great Is Our God. In an auditorium full of students, they were not saying the same words, but were singing the same song. Then it hit all of us. Like a Pentecost moment, it was clear that the words and the languages do not matter, but what spirit transcribes in our hearts to those who gathered at that very moment, sharing the space, sharing the passion, and sharing the faith. When we gather, we are connected to one another. And it is the same Holy Spirit that threads and binds all of us to one another and to God, God's self. It is ironic that I had that moment in that specific building as later I found out that Follinger Auditorium was actually built to be the greatest music hall in the Midwest during its conception. And yet, due to its funding restrictions, very similar to our building, it never achieved the goal. And it was actually acoustically poor. Many times, demolishing such a building was considered Yet, with many research, renovations, and reconstructions, what was once imperfect building became one of the eye-catching structures in the main quad of U of I. If we are a vessel for the Lord to dwell, how well are we maintaining and perfecting our temples for the Lord in our hearts? If your heart is anything like mine, it is far from God's blueprint that was originally intended. It has been battered with many storms of life, and sometimes we feel the loads of responsibilities that sometimes make it feel like I am carrying a weight of an elephant. At the time of its writing, Jeremiah and Paul are going through their own storms, worries, and experiencing what it may feel like a hopeless situation as Jeremiah is trying to reel in the reality of the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. And while Paul was facing his own imminent death sentence. We know Jeremiah spilled all his pains and heartaches to the Lord. And Paul must have done the same through his prayers as they expressed their deepest pain of their souls and hardships, something changes within them. After honestly looking at the problem, they do not dwell on them, but they face what is to come in faith. Romans chapter 30 Chapter 8, 30, verse 39 tells us that nothing we can do can separate us from the love of God 
This is only possible through God's grace. After looking directly at the problem, both Jeremiah and Paul recall the faithfulness of the Lord. Rather than focusing on the problem at hand, they focus on the gift of the grace of God, which is freely given to you, to me, and to us all. Likewise, we need to look honestly at our obstacles in our lives. Then we need to remember how grace has carried us and placed us where we are today because if we are also with, honest about ourselves, about our failures and all the wrong things that are happening in our lives, then we must be honest of our successes too. That there are things that were out of our hands and only belonged in God's. Yet, if we stopped there, we wouldn't be who we are called to be. It would not be the Westminster's way we should never be satisfied with ourselves being content and being hopeful in faith. We need to join all the saints of every time and place to share that grace of God, to share the hope that rises with God's love. Throughout the history of Christianity, if there is one thing that shaped and told others that we are Christians, is by their act of love. In the face of black plagues, wars, and various disasters, Christians continue to minister to all people. Those who are plague-affected, people who are injured on both sides of the battle, and people who are impacted by all kinds of natural and human-made disasters. Christ followers around the world throughout its history who remained nameless, yet served and aided all people from various backgrounds to all tribes and ethnicities, to all those different social tiers and etc. If they had words that they could speak, it may be such as this. I may not know who you are, but I am willing to die alongside you to suffer with you, to be in solidarity, solidarity, to be your voice for you, to care for you, to be your support, and to be present. Not because I am better than anyone else, but because I too am a recipient of God's love and grace who have died for me. Through such random act of kindness, we can overcome the obstacles in the world and in our lives. God's kindness and love will have the final word. So friends, let us live out our calling that we are called to do, and that is to be in the world for ministry. On this World Communion Sunday, let us pray for the people around the world. Let us walk the crop walk, for we are all Ubuntu which means we are all interconnected with other people. 
and that we are known for our generosity. For when we are gathered, God does something for us and in us and through us. Amen. At this time, let us present our gifts in the weekly offering. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Holy triune God, bread of life, accept these gifts given in gratitude and dedicated in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
of the Word Sunday. Christians from around the world are gathered at the table, one family sharing one meal. On this very day, we focus our attention on the global gathering that happens every time we share the cup and the food. Christ invites us, let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let anyone who believes me in me drink. As we join in the, together in the great prayer of thanksgiving, we remember the following members in our prayers. Discharged from the hospitals this week, Steve Rutledge and Gary Warnick. Recovering at the bridge, Donald Funk. Congratulations to Norma and Frank Adams Johnson on the birth of their great granddaughter, Elise Marie Jerome, on September 17th to Christian and Nathan Jerome. We celebrate the milestone 50th anniversary of Dr. Dan, Diane and Steve Rutledge on October 7th. Taylor Kopp and Daniel Stefanczyk were married in our sanctuary yesterday, and we continue to pray for the hungry and those whose lives have been devastated by war, oppression, and natural disasters. The Lord be with you. Yes. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, creator of the universe. Christ died that we might live and is risen to raise us to new life. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with choirs of angels and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and living. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ shall come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your spirit, make us one with Christ. We remember those unable to be present who will receive home communion today. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Hear now the prayer Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not to temptation, but let us deliver us from evil. And the thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. On the night before Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, gave thanks and blessed it, and said, This is my body broken for you. Each time you take of it, do it in remembrance of me. In the same way, he poured the cup, saying, This is the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you take it, do it in remembrance of me. 
Therefore, each time we take the bread and the cup, we proclaim the grace and the love of the one who came to be with us and to celebrate the life will that will be together in heaven for all eternity. So friends, let us come together and dine at the Lord's table. If you could take the bread, but hold on to the cup so that we may proclaim the love of Christ as one body at first. Then let us come together for this is the table of the Lord and for all God's children.
says it says, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me shall never hunger. The one who believes in me shall never thirst. Please rise for the prayer after communion. Gracious God, you create more than we could ever hope. And you freely give more than we could ever hope to deserve. In the name of Jesus, we use the word of witness and service for the sake of God. You all heard 
If there is one way to overcome evil and obstacles in the world, is we smother them with love and kindness. And there is no better arsenal that we have than God's love that comes from our hearts from the Lord above. So let us be ambassadors to the world. Let us go with the confidence that knowing the amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the everlasting love of our God above, and the gentle and yet powerful whispers of the Holy Spirit that works in us, that is around us, and through us to be with you now and forevermore. Amen.